Welcome to puzzle solving number 8. In this series, the video is divided in three stages. Number 1, evaluation, where I evaluate the initial position of the puzzle. Number 2, calculation, where we use candidate moves to find ourselves in the different variations of the position. And number 3, a summary of what I could have done better in the puzzle or a little bit of a conclusion to di digest all the information that we just went through. So here we have the puzzle. I haven't seen this position before other than when I was getting ready to record this. And yeah, it seems like we're playing with the white pieces. So first things first, as I said in the intro, I'm going to evaluate the position. For me to understand what's going on, I'm just dropped into this position. I don't know what's going on. So I want to give myself a little bit of context. It seems like we have one, two, three, four, four pawns, two rooks, one queen and a bishop. Black has one, two, three, four, five pawns, two rooks, a queen, a bishop and a knight. So we're down a pawn and a minor piece, uh, a knight specifically. Okay, material balance we're not doing very well. But what about king safety? Well, king safety wise, I think my, my, my white king is pretty, pre doing pretty well. This king on g7 is more likely to get checked. Rook h7 is already a motive, an idea, a candidate move. And um, that's, that's the things that I'm noticing. Is there anything else that is worth noticing? If anything, I think that black's pieces seem to be white in the either in the center or in the queen side the only guy around is the rook on f8 which leads me to believe that there's going to be some sort of forced sequence of moves that will force black to well black's king to get to a very dangerous if not checkmate right away dangerous position sorry if not checkmate right away so those things being said i think we can safely move on to candidate moves which well sorry can uh, calculation the calculation segment of this video where we use candidate moves and this is essentially what takes the longest. So if you look at this video, you're probably going to put your mouse a little bit on the bottom. You'll notice that the segment of calculation is significantly longer than any other segment. And that's the nature of chess. So in this position, can removes this rook h7. I think queen d3 is another candidate move defending the bishop. Moving the bishop away is another candidate move. And other than that, I don't see any other candidate move. So rook h7, bishop b1, and queen d3. First of all, I would like to kind of like, I'm, I'm going to look at rook h7 first because you always have to look at the most forcing moves and the most forcing kind of move in chess is check. Rook h7, I think white, sorry, black has two options, king g8 or king takes g6. Let me eliminate king g8. I want to eliminate as much as I can because it makes my calculation more organized. It's like when you, you have homework and you do the easier home, easiest homework first just so you get that out of the way because you know that you can get it out of the way quickly. So I want to get that, I want to eliminate quick, eliminate that quickly for me to have a little bit more uh, more focus on the really important lines. Rook h7, king g8. I'm going to try to eliminate this. If I don't manage in the following 30 seconds, then I, will, I, will, I normally move on. And it means that if I can't eliminate it in the next 30 seconds, as I said, that probably this is a very serious line. So rook h7, king g8, once again. I have probably queen g4, and I have a hard time believing that black will survive this. I think queen h5 followed by rook h8, queen h7 is pretty deadly. Black can try f5 in that position, but already there, queen h5, queen f6. Once again, I'm going to do this in a very organized way, so pay attention. Rook h7, king g8, queen g4, f5, queen h5, threatening rook h8, queen h7 or queen h6, uh, all sorts of things. Um, so queen f6 in that position, sorry, queen f6 by black. And after this, doesn't seem like I have a direct win, by the way, which is pretty surprising. Interesting, so rook h7, king g8. Not as easy as I thought. Okay, I'm going to reserve that. If king g6, can I eliminate that quickly? I think I can. Queen d3 check. There's bishop e4 there. If f5, by the way, that in that line, rook h7, king takes g6, queen d3, f5. I have queen h3, and queen h6 is pretty unstoppable. Queen h6 is actually unstoppable, and that's going to be mate. So, rook h7, king takes g6. Surprisingly, queen d3, white, sorry, black has to play bishop e4. Ah, but then I play queen h3 either way. I just ignore that, and it's probably going to be mate. Although queen h6 is not a threat because of king f5. Is the king escaping? I don't believe in that. I don't believe a king on f5 is going to survive. Okay, well, we've calculated some lines with rook h7. I'm just going to calculate the other candidate moves to stay in the safe side. But so far, I feel like rook h7 is the answer. 
Bishop b1 is the second move that I think is worth considering because it's threatening to do rook h7 in a better version. f5 is not possible because it's still pinned. And um, yeah, after this, it is kind of a difficult move to, to make uh, considering that you're threatening to threat. And when you're in these tactical positions, threatening to threat is usually very slow. So bishop b4, b1, sorry, already rook c4 is in my mind and something that worries me a little bit. Rook h7, king g8. Um, queen d3 would be threatening queen g6. But once again, f5. f5 followed by queen, after queen h3, queen f6. It seems like miraculously black is just surviving that. So bishop e1, I'm worried about rook c4. And I think I'm already inclining to, to, to eliminate that once and for all. So bishop b1, if, if bishop b1 is pretty slow, then queen d3 I'm expecting to be very slow. I think after f5, uh, king takes g6 is a threat. Although we could transpose to the other line with rook h7, king takes g6, rook h, queen h3. And that would be winning. That's interesting actually. Queen d3. Interesting. Actually that's very interesting. Ah, but then queen d3, rook h8. There we go. That's this refutation. Because now if I take, then everything gets traded. And I lose my opportunity to play rook h7. So I'm going to play rook h7. I've calculated everything. Let's see if this is the right way. There we go. It is the right way. And king takes g6 is played. I'm suspecting that king g8 is just a little bit too suspicious. Um, reason being, still a little bit difficult to, to prove. Like queen g4, f5, uh, queen h5, queen f6. And something there. There, there must be something. There. King g8. What am I not seeing? Maybe it's just playing with a compensation of... of, of of maybe there's not so, something direct f5 queen h5 queen f6 maybe h4 either way I, I still oh i see maybe rook h6 bishop h7 is a very strong threat yeah there we go and we're gonna get the queen it feels like the queen is in a dangerous place there yeah i think that's that's it and if not then there's some sort of, for example there's this line king g8 queen g4 f5 queen h5 queen f6 rook h6 for example, if queen g7, bishop h7 check, king h8, bishop takes a 5 check. And there's going to be so many checks and eventually rook g6 will come and that will pick up the queen. So king takes g6 was played. And now we had planned queen d3. Do we have anything other than that? The answer is no, we don't. So let's play queen d3. Bishop e4. And now we have the question, queen h3 or queen takes e4? This is what we had calculated before, but we still don't fully understand. Queen takes e4 check, I stopped calculating after f5, but the reality is that there's still a very forcing move, which is queen takes b7, taking back the material that we were uh, deficit, or we, we, we were lacking, and we're threatening queen g7. Actually, I think queen takes e4 is winning. And you're allowed to kind of miss this kind of ideas, because if you're eliminating little by little the other moves, then you're, you're using something called the method of elimination. And... That's one very serious way of making decisions in chess, by eliminating all the bad moves and playing playing pretty much what you have left. In this position, I'm already thinking about tactics like rook takes e6, but the problem is that rook c1 I'm getting back ranked. So I'm, I have the idea of h4 first, threatening h5 mate, g takes h4 and then rook takes e6. If queen takes e6, the pawn is queen g7, and yeah, I think h4. Now, something that I keep repeating and I almost made a mistake. I know that when you're trying to find the best move in chess, you're very excited when you think you found it. And that's something that I almost made a mistake right now. So h4, I'm very excited about this. I'm pretty confident that after h5, that after h5, sorry, this is going to be the right way of playing. And after g takes h4, rook takes e6 is, is, is working and, and I'm winning the queen and I'm winning the game, I feel. But I have to stop myself. As much as I want to play that, I have to stop myself. Because if not, then this is going to be a bad habit. And that bad habit is going to cost you so many games, believe me. So h4, g takes h4, rook takes e6, that's winning. h4, is there anything else black can play? If f5, h5, king f5, queen e4, that's, well, king g4, f3. I mean, there's going to be a mate there, right? Actually, there's a beautiful mate. Is there a beautiful mate? I don't know, but there's queen f3, king f5, g4, king g6, queen e4. You have to give up with the queen with queen f5. If not, there's a quicker mate over there. So h4, both g uh, sorry, both g takes h4 and f4 kind of eliminated. g4, h5, king g5. 
I don't know. There must be a mate there as well. H4, G4. Ah, there's rook takes E6 as well. And if queen takes E6, queen G7, queen G7 mate. So that's eliminated. Other than that, is there other way of preventing this? And rook F7. Rook F7 is a very serious move. But then after rook takes F7, queen takes F7, queen takes C8, we just up a rook. So we're going to play H4. There we go. And that's the answer to the puzzle. Because after something like DG takes H4, the point is rook takes E6, queen takes E6, queen G7 is mate. And as I was saying before, for example, F4, this is asking for trouble. There must be a mate here. Where's the mate? King G4. Oh, there we go. Beautiful mate. Okay. Oh, sorry. I almost forgot the summary. <laughs> Never mind. So we, we looked at this position. We already knew that it was a very sharp position because it's, it's in this position we evaluated. We knew that it was a far sharp position because material balance and king safety are, are the highest priorities. It's not pawn structure. It's not maneuvers. It's not which piece you want to trade. It's more concrete than that. It's more, it's quicker. So we thought about this. We, concre we uh, concluded that black is up material, but king safety wise, black is suffering more. We came up with candidate moves. Three, one of them is more forcing than the other ones. Rook h7. After this, king g8 and king takes g6. We organ, but we kind of rejected king g8 intuitively, queen g4, f5, queen h5. Although we were not very sure, intuitively we tell that, okay, three pieces, two of them are, are a rook and a queen. The other one is a bishop. Far deep into black's throat. There's no way black is surviving that. So king takes g6 was played. And after queen d3, we knew for sure that f5, queen h3 was winning. That's something useful that we did. We calculated right from the beginning. Meaning that bishop takes e bishop e4 was left. And here, actually, we had talked about queen h3 mainly. And yeah, it, yeah, it is threatening queen h6. But after king f5, it seems like the king is escaping. So we did a very good job here at, once again, considering our options. And yeah, making sure that queen takes e4 was found which is the right way. And after f5, queen takes b7. Now we're threatening queen g7. And once again, not, not being impulsive, being patient, and making sure that you're understanding all your opponent's resources. Rook takes e6, rook takes e6 would be such a big shame for white. You would get back ranked immediately. h4 first is the best move, and then rook takes e6, and you're winning the game. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that useful. Let me know how it went. Let me know if you found the moves. And as always, yeah, subscribe, have a, give a like and have a nice day.